Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Real with Jordan and Demi in Los Angeles. I'm Jordan Edwards in New York. We got Demi Ramos. What's up, Demi? Hello, Jordan. And today, our very special guest is Ari Alexakis from Everclear. Art, thank you for joining us on the show. You are here because it's a big time for Everclear right now. Not only is the 30th anniversary of the band, but you're re-releasing your debut album, World of Noise. First of all, how did World of Noise, it went out of print, right? It, it, it hasn't been available digitally, correct? Right. Yeah. So I made the record in 1992. Uh, for four hundred dollars worth of trade, <laughs> sorry, um, and uh, then I put it out on an indie labels, licensed it to an indie label, didn't give it to them or sell it to them. Oh. Uh, out in 94, 93. and then when we went and signed to Capital in ninety four, licensed it to them, and uh, they licensed it for five years, and then by that time in nineteen ninety nine, we were given a multi platinum big album, so. They weren't paying attention to World of Noise and <laughs> it went out of print. And I hadn't done anything with it. And super fans have been bugging me about putting it on social platforms. And I figured we were going to do it sometime. But in like the first week of January, I'm at my uh, studio and uh, our storage is in the back. And me and Freddie, my bass player, were going through boxes and we found the actual master and mixtapes for World of Noise that I thought were gone 15, 20 years ago. I thought they were gone. Um, and a bunch of other tapes of, of demos and stuff. So I had those all remastered, um, new artwork, and it's going to social platform, social media, uh, social platforms, June 10th. Yeah. Wow. Coming out in vinyl, too, later in the year. Art. Rock music is popping off again. You may have heard yeah. it's having a comeback, right? But what I want to know is, what is it like to be a real rock star? Mm. What is the daily life of a real rock star like? I don't know. I, mm. if I, uh, I'll, I'll tell you. I live in Pasadena, so you can pretty much hit one. It's That's where all the rock stars live is Pasadena, up yeah. in the mountains. Yeah, yeah. actually, yeah. Pasadena, a lot of punk rock stars yeah mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of hardcore stuff up there um well art um let me get i want to get into the recording a world of noise i know that you, you talked about that it was really shoestring budget 400 bucks but let's talk about the the actual recording the gear you used demi's a musician demi's a guitarist so she can appreciate this i'm assuming you didn't have the world's best gear when you were putting this together <laughs> um not so much, no. Um, what kind of guitar do you play, Demi? I play a Lipson Guess Paul. Gibson Les Paul. My heart stopped. <laughs> right. So we're gonna go look at the guitars, okay? Really? Oh my god, awesome. I'm blushing, I'm blushing. Wow, those are all your guitars? These are a third of my guitars. A third? Yeah. How? So, first of all. I recorded World of Noise with this guitar. Whoa. It's very, it's very beat up. It's a 68 Guild. Um, um, it's not a duo jet. I forget what it's called. Uh, my, oh, it's a Blackbird. It's a Blackbird. And wow. um, I played through a Fender Twin, but it's it was a rare model of a Fender Twin called a Fender Super Twin that had more tubes in it. Unfortunately, at the time, I couldn't afford to uh, buy new tubes. So if you listen to the record, there's a lot of feedback and it's squealing all the time and blue things would be shooting, it, like blue fire would be shooting out of the, the amp and mm -hmm. I'd have to cool it off, turn it off and then fi finish a take. How but, do you decide uh, what stickers to put on your guitars? Um, I just, you know, truck stops. They all come from truck stops, you know? I just, I thought it was a cute kitty in, oh. in New Mexico. There used to be another one, but I think it fell off it. 
But uh, you're a Les Paul girl, so you'll mm -hmm. appreciate this. This was that nice. a gold top. That's yeah, a card I have to play on. Yeah, it's a gold top. Oh, it's kind of beat up. I this borrowed time. it from someone. So when we got signed to Capitol um, in '94, we drove across country to and took all our gear to go record at Smart Studios, Butch Vick Studio in Madison, Wisconsin. When we got to Lacrosse, we played a show, and they have a great guitar sh stop shop there called um, Bob's Guitars, and I bought this. And I couldn't believe I could afford it. It was $800 off, off the wall, played like a dream. And uh, it's been in, it was in the, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for a while, because it's been on about six or seven platinum records. Our four, our four platinum records and um, uh, other other albums I played on as well. But that's a, that's a great guitar. Anyway. Wow! Thank but you so I'm, much for the for this for the instrument tour. That's okay. I, I th you guys have been very patient. I I I just you know I, I yeah. Like this was this was great. That was great. When it comes, so I know that you know fans have been wanting this re-release did you, you know you can find copies of the songs on youtube and things like that and and you know specifically there's a lot of uh fire maple song is the one comes off the top of my head that's a fan right. favorite that you know you go in the youtube comments is about how much they love the song it's one of the best everclear songs um when it came to remastering this or putting this together how much of the audio quality did you improve versus wanting to keep that raw feeling that fans love about that first album well, that's a really good question, actually. I so I wanted to keep that, right? I wanted to keep that immediacy and that 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 just the document of where we were at the time. Uh, we were poor. I was on welfare. I had a baby at home. I had never. I didn't know what it meant to be a father. I was working very hard to be one, but it was very frustrating, hard time. That's why that record is so angry and full of just fire and i didn't want to lose that but at the same time when capital put it out in 94 they mastered it without me they just mastered it and um it was a big brouhaha at the time because i had creative control but but mm. instead of time and money i'm just like fine but i always thought it was kind of thin high andy um didn't sound as good and so when i got the tapes i went and listened to what we had at a friend of mine's studio, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to remaster this with my guy, and uh, I think the, it sounds 100% better, if not 200% better. There's just a lot more low end. Um, it's just more meat on the bone, you know. It just it just sounds more closer to what I remember that record sounding like. Yeah, the original version it it is more high end. It almost feels like your vocals are almost competing with the guitars. Like the yep. balance of the vocals and the guitars is really not what, no, it's definitely not that sparkle and fade quality that you would get a couple years later. Well, there's a difference between spending $400 on a record and $85,000. Yeah, totally, totally. When you look back at all of the tours that you did worldwide, all of the platinum records, does it ever, I mean, do you ever get jaded from all of the success or does it still feel today just like are you in awe of how big the band um has become i don't know if i'm in awe because i've lived with it for a long time but that's a really good question um i don't think i've become jaded i think i mean i live in a i i live in a house down the street from my studio and then uh, about a mile and a half down the street and then mile and a half the other way is my daughter's school for mm -hmm. another week till she graduates eighth grade and then she goes to high school. But um, I, we're, we're pretty down to earth people, but there's a, there's a certain sense of it. Like if someone asked me if I go back on tour in a van again, <laughs> I'm too old for that. I've been through too much. You know, if someone came and said, you can't afford that. You got to go back to a van. I'd be like, man, it's a hell of a run, guys. <laughs> I've always, the word rock star, that, the title rock star has always been a bad word to me. And I really embraced that. Because I came up in a punk rock kind of mentality where 
there was no rock stars. You were just like yeah. you were a successful musician or not. Um, I, Demi, all I've ever wanted to do was make a living, have a family, own a nice house, uh, and be able to play guitar for a living. And here I am, 60 years old, still doing it. So I feel like I'm, I'm sober. I've got a great program. Um, I've got some health issues, as you probably know. Um, but I take good care of myself. I just got done swimming before. That's why I was running late, because I had to do some errands. But I had to get my workout in. Yeah. Get that cardio in. Yeah. I got it. Well, because I have MS, I can't get overheated by running and stuff like that. So, oh, that's but, interesting. I hadn't thought about that. So the yeah. the water keeps you cool. Wow. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. But I can't really run anymore anyway because of my leg. But um, you know, it's 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 all it's all relative, um, to the world that considered me. I was in, on Saturday Night Live. I was on magazine covers. Mm -hmm. Um sold millions of records in the estimation of most people. It, you guys there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're sure we can do like, we can change the <laughs> camera. Yeah. 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 Freaking me out. Uh, <laughs> um, yes. It, I understand that. I, I, I guess I was a rock star for a while, you know, and uh, that was fun. The interesting but, thing about you, about the, whenever clear hit you were already 30 it wasn't like you were some 20 year old college kid no whenever um, and i was i was 33 wow. i was 33 and when we signed to capital when i was 22 they told me that they wanted me to lie about my age and tell tell my tell everybody i was 24 and <laughs> i wouldn't do it and uh it's just not me you know i'm yeah. just you know, I, I'm not going to lie about that. That was stupid. And plus, oh I would have forgot. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you slipped up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my point was that because you were older when Everclear you know, blew up, how grateful for you, were you for the opportunity? Because you'd spent your 20s struggling trying to make it. Exactly. So how much of that? Because you guys put out a, between 93 and 2000, 2001, you guys put out a lot of music. So was there a sense of like urgency because you were a little bit older to like pump it out as, as much as you could to ring out as much as you could? I always, that's a great question. I always had a sense of urgency because I always thought this could be our last record. Mm. I don't know. No one knows. So I put everything, I left it all on the stage, left it all in the studio. Um, you know, there was, there was, there was nothing left over. I wouldn't, stop until it was done as as good i wanted to reduce the amount of cringe factor to the lowest <laughs> the lowest amount possible as an artist you can appreciate that how did you balance family life um once you signed your deal and the band was on tour how did you balance become like being a, father? You're already a dad and everything. Yeah, your daughter was like yeah. young at that point your firstborn yeah so how did how did you how did your how did your um how well, is your relationship affected with your wife? Not good. Mm. Not, I wasn't, I, you know, I wasn't drinking or doing drugs, but I wasn't a good, a good partner. I wasn't a good um, husband. I considered myself a great dad, but in, in hindsight, I don't think you can be a great dad if you're not a good husband to that child's mother. And I, uh, I was, I, I, I was enjoying it. I didn't do drugs. I put all my addictive behavior to that. Mm. And sex and power and control and all those other things. I wasn't strong in my program during that period. Um, I've been clean and sober 33 years, but uh, okay. when, but compared to the last five years, especially the last three years, um, my, my program is very strong, but um, I've been married four times. That was my second wife, mm -hmm. and, uh, my wife now. I think if you took my first three marriages time-wise and relationships and put them there, two of those would fit into my relationship with my wife now. Mm -hmm. Wow. 18 years. Yeah. And wow. Never broken up. We've never separated. Um, I've slept on the couch a few times. <laughs> 
one thing that is to me is real distinctive of Everclear is the sound. I think you guys came up in the wake of of the quote unquote post grunge era in the in the mid nineties when really anything we've talked about is with other guests. Um, where anything could be a hit, where you had like um, some harder rock coming out, you had uh, a ska, an inexplicable ska revival, you had like all these weird movements. And I think the um, the two things that stand out to me about Everclear is you guys always sounded a little bit unhinged. The guitars were always kind of messy. It was always <laughs> loud. Even even your your more polished albums, when you had a budget, there was like an uneasiness. It wasn't smooth. Even the pop songs, the radio friendly songs, there was a little messiness to it. Um, honest. And, you, honest. And, you, and you talk about in your, um, in that, in the uh, little 20 minute Everclear retrospective documentary that's on YouTube, you talk about how you approach your songwriting like a classic singer songwriter, but with kind of like a hard rock attitude. Um, so when you were, when you had the chance to make songs with Everclear, where were you as a songwriter? Cause you'd had those gears to kind of ramp up. To be honest with you, thank you. I, when, when you say that about um, that, that unhingedness, I take that as quite a compliment. Um, I'm my heroes growing up were like people who didn't draw within the lines. Mm. Um, you know, um, some, some were, but, I think the Beatles, if they didn't have George Martin, they would have been seriously unhinged. Um, <laughs> but the Rolling Stones, um, Sabbath, all that stuff. Yeah. I, I, cheap Trick growing up, and then Punk Rock hit, and X, and Sex Pistols, and and uh, stuff like that. But Neil Young, Pixies, all that stuff that's just not, that's kind of dissonant and kind of a little bit off. Yeah, that's always been my thing. I think to answer your question, it wasn't that premeditated. I just was writing songs. That's what I felt at the time. That's what I wanted to hear. That's what I was listening to. That's I wanted to make. I've always had a pop thing. I grew up with AM radio. Mm -hmm. I knew that there was more of a pop thing coming out, but that's not where I was yet. This is where I was. Every record you hear, that's exactly where I was as a songwriter and a producer and a guitar player and a singer. I wasn't trying to be anything I was. Yeah. Yeah. That, but, that, that totally, it totally makes sense. I want to, yeah. I don't want to, you know, go into the, the, the stories behind your songs. You don't have time for that, but I do want to get a sense of your catalog, the way you feel about certain songs. What was, was there, a, is there a song that's your favorite to perform live? Of, you mean now? Of yeah, all like songs? the song you still love to play live, Everclear song. I love to play. I, I know you're not going to like this. I love to play them all. I love playing our hits. Uh, I love seeing people's faces uh, when we play Santa Monica or Wonderful or I'll Buy You New Life. And when we play Father of Mine, it makes grown men cry. Let's Why wouldn't I want to enjoy that? You know, it's all, all joking aside, it's just. Um, I love playing, I think if, if I had to pick a song that's the funnest to play, it would be the punk rock songs and definitely probably heroin girl off Sparkle and Fade. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Art, with rock music coming back, as everyone, as we spoke about earlier, what advice do you have for all of the new coming bands that are kind of just breaking into the sphere? Well, I, I would say two things. One thing, don't just listen to what the, the band next to you or the band uh, coming behind you or or your friends are doing. Go back deep and listen to all the recorded rock music there is. There's such great music. And don't copy it, but let it influence you. Let, let it push you into a place where you can develop your own voice, not just this voice, but the voice of what your songs sound like, what your lyrics sound like. Like if you read a book, you can hear that writer's voice. It might mm -hmm. sound different to you, to you and different to me, but we can hear the voice of that writer. It's the same with music and with songs. And um, to develop, I think you need uh, a big gene pool to swim in, you know? You need an ocean 
to swim in, not not some shallow little pool, just what's contemporary and what's what's selling now. And also, my 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 recommendation to anyone is, don't give up if you really believe it. Work on it. Don't give up. Show tenacity. You know, press perseverance. Um, I thankfully learned that from my mother. She didn't. Once she got a hold of something, man, she wouldn't let it go. It could be very, very scary as a kid with a, with a mother like that. <laughs> but, but at the same time, she raised me upright. And I yeah. appreciate that. Shout out to yeah. mom. Yeah, shout out to mom. We didn't mention you do or you're doing a huge anniversary tour across the U.S. Yes. Um, all over, coast to coast. Um, how do you select songs? I know you got to play the hits. But also, how do you select those other songs? You know, are, are there people, can people hear songs from, from, uh, from World of Noise, from the back catalog? How do you pick your songs for your set list? Well, I always play the hits. I get very frustrated and irritated and agitated with bands that don't play their hits. So we always <laughs> play our hits, play the fan favorites. Um, and uh, in the, this tour coming up, we're going to play more songs off World of Noise than we really do Fire Maple Song or Nervous and Weird, which were the singles off the, those that record. Um, we're going to add a couple more songs and maybe a, a bonus track or two that's that's going to be on the new record because there's six bonus tracks. Two of them have never been released before. Oh, so man. we're going to mix it up. What was it like to listen to those old songs as you remastered them? What was the emotional experience like? Oh, it was very emotional. It was very emotional, especially when I listened to this one song that it's one of the bonus tracks that have never been released before called Drunk Again. It's a song that was on the original World of Noise demo tape, didn't make it to the album. We we had written and record I had written, we recorded Nervous and Weird and put that in there instead but listening to that song it's this guy talking to his his girlfriend or wife about not coming home drunk or high so that their kid would see her like that and that was i was i was when i wrote that i was maybe two years sober and wow. so it's 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 intense it's an intense story and, yeah um, but but yeah. just the the memories that came back from all those songs of being there and doing it and where I was in my life at the time. I'm so grateful that I'm not back poor. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't need to be rich. I just don't want to be poor. If you've ever yeah. been poor, poor sucks. Yeah, yeah and, uh, I feel it. Being able to do what you love for a living and making a living, making a living at it, it's living the dream, man. Well, you've been, your this conversation has been inspirational just about, you know, accepting what you have and being grateful for the blessings you, you, you received. And so, never giving up. Ever. Never giving up. Absolutely. Thank you, Thank you, Art, for talking to us. We'll let you go. Uh, the uh, new uh, World of Noise remaster is out. And uh, of course, catch Everclear on tour across the country. Thank you so much, Art. Thank Tour starts June 9th in Boise, Idaho goes for six weeks. So go to everclearonline.com, get those dates. And thank you guys so much. You guys have been wonderful. Really appreciate it. Great questions. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you on Absolutely. tour. All right. See you later. Bye. Bye. That was Art Alexakis, front man for Everclear, the new remaster of World of Noise with out digitally and on LP. And of course, catch them on tour as Art just mentioned. We will be right back with a summer music preview. And now we're going to talk about some of the most anticipated new releases of the summer. It's we're already into June. Demi, it's June 6th as we're recording this. Um, but we still have a lot of summer left. So let's talk about some of uh, the albums we're looking forward to. Yay. Uh, so give me one of yours. What what have you what have you got? Okay. So the Weezer album is coming out June 20th and it's called the Summer EP, which is okay. pretty cool. The There's Summer no, album. It's, it's not a, it's not a color. It's not the blue album, green album, but turquoise uh 
Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. Nothing. I mean, Weezer can honestly put out whatever they want at this point in time. But with Rock coming back, you know, it's exciting. Like, we have a Weezer album. And I mean, nothing's going to beat that 1994 self-titled album. That's for sure. We're seeing some of these older rock acts and rock acts have been around for a while have viral songs, have hit songs. So you never know what's going to be uh, catch on from that Weezer album. You know, what kid is going to post some song on TikTok exactly. using a Weezer song from that album. And so you never know. You never know. That's true. A lot of, a lot of um, like unexpected acts are like popping off because of the internet nowadays. You never know. I wanted to talk about real quick. Joyce Manor, 40 ounces of Fresno. Joyce Manor is one of these really kind of hard, kind of abrasive rock bands with messy guitars and kind of off-kilter vocals that I love. They came about the same, about around the same time as Surf Curse, one of your favorite bands. And um, and I'm interested to see if say for the same thing as a weird thing, like will uh, I think there's kind of like a revisionist history with the rock bands from the last 10 or 12 years, is that some uh, you know, these bands that didn't catch on with the mainstream 10 years ago are suddenly kind of getting a second chance at this. So I'm interested to see, this is their first full length in a while. So interested to see what uh, comes of that. Uh, Demi, what's your, what's the one you're listening to? Okay. So Neil Young and Crazy Horse, which comes out July 8th. And the reason why I like Neil Young is not just because, you know, he's like classic, but I was once in Paris and I was super lonely and I was staying like all by myself in this Airbnb and they had a record player and the only record they have, like the only English record they had was a Neil Young record. Um, damn, was it the Moonlight? It Harvest hard, Moon. Hard. It was Harvest Moon. And... Um, yeah, I fell in love with that with that record. So I'm excited to hear what he what he's well, doing. Well, it won't be on Spotify. We know that. I am looking forward to on June 24th, uh, Muna, their self-titled album. They're a uh, pop trio, kind of in the same vein as Haim, um, but more, um, a little bit more like dance poppy, a little bit. But um, the reason I want to talk about them is just reviewed Not The Main Characters band here in LA for popdust.com. And we're talking about uh, bands that we've been listening to. And one of the members of Not The Main Characters uh, talked about Moon, And they just had a, uh, a, a feature on Pitchwork. Also in the comments, um, if it's actually um, Muna or Muna, if I'm mispronouncing it, but I think it's Muna, right? I think it's Muna. Um, yeah, that's the thing too about uh, internet music in, in this age, in the streaming age, is, Demi, how often do you, have you seen a name of a band or a, a solo artist over and over again, but you've never heard it pronounced by a person on anything? You just know it from, like, seeing it That's on things. so true. Yeah. Because now so. there's just so many things out there. Yeah. Yeah. And people don't, um, people don't, I don't know, you don't listen to the radio as much. So you don't get like the DJ telling you what the what the name of the artist was, you know? So like it's almost too. uncool if you like listen to Top 40. No offense. Yeah. It's like, oh, wait a second. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of Top 40, I also, this is also a big, probably one of the most anticipated albums of the summer, Lizzo Special, which is out on July 15th. We will see if Lizzo is more than, obviously she's more than one hit wonder because About Damn Time is is a huge hit already. Uh, but we'll see what, because I, I, um, I don't think to this point any other singles, and we're uh, about six weeks from the release of the album, I don't think any other singles have been released or teased from the album. So who knows what it sounds like. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. Demi, what else you got? Oh my goodness. Okay, we have Florist. Have you ever heard of Florist, Jordan? No, educate me. Well, Florist is one of those acts that I don't know much about, but like I said, I saw this EP is coming out and I know, you know, some artists have this really cool thing where they're more of like a mystery and um, Flourish is just one of those acts. Um, kind of like, I would say like Two Feet is kind of like that, sort of like they don't implement their, their image as much in the album, in the artwork sometimes, you know, that made no sense. 
I know what you're saying though. Yeah, you, you, know don't, I mean? you don't put your you don't put your face. They don't put their face yeah. out in front. Yeah. With the yeah. That made no like, sense. Like Tool, <laughs> like Tool. Famously, you never see <laughs> Maynard James Keenan's face yeah. on the cover of an old Tool album. You know, that's when we were getting ready for this one album. We kind of texted back and forth a little bit about was the new Panic at the Disco album. And here's another act that really rode, they were kind of, their height of their popularity happened kind of at the tail end of the the rock wave of the late 2000s. And what's interesting about this album is we'll be able to see, are they going to be able to capitalize on this? Because they're not a legacy act. They're not in their 50s yet. You know, it's not like they're that old. They could still have, hit songs from this uh it's called uh viva viva Las vengeance the the title track is out now uh, on spotify i'm not sure about the title viva Las vengeance is a little too i think everyone's just waiting for another i write sins not tragedies you know yeah come on man that's what we're all waiting for i don't know how do you have a song like that like how do you top that you know what i'm saying yeah it's almost like how do you top that song i like some of their stuff all right do you got any more demi Okay, I have two more very opposite types of acts. One is called Mall Grab, which is another artist that I would definitely love to dig into more, but I found out um, about this artist because they did this like collab with Turnstile where the guy pretty much, I don't even know how he got the rights to do this. He must have had to, but basically he took Turnstile vocals and put auto-tune on them. Um, the real thing was one of the songs and I Wanna Be Blind, but basically he puts auto-tune on the vocals and has like these 80s kick and snare kind of like mashup. And it is just, and I'm not an 80s music kind of girl, but there's something super like infectious about those songs. I'm gonna send them to you like later, Jordan, but I'm curious to see what this project is going to sound like and if he's going to have any features you know it's an electronic act so let's see what happens i'm like oh shit is there going to be a turn on there again like what and what day is that coming out that is coming out august 5th august 5th um and you said you one more and madonna bro madonna it's the greatest hits album isn't it it's like a 50 50- it is called finally enough love so i'm not sure if it's the greatest hits. i think i saw yeah well we'll well, somebody in the, the notes will correct this. Jordan, are you a Madonna fan? I've never heard you talk about Madonna. I like certain Madonna songs. So I love early 80s Madonna. I like Lucky Star and Holiday and those types of songs. Um, I also love, one of my favorite songs of all time, honestly, is the song Don't Tell Me, um, which is one of her kind of later career songs. It's I think it's off the music album. Um, but it kind of has this acoustic guitar loop and she's dressed in like Western clothes in the music video. But yeah, I, I do like, um, and live to tell is one of my favorite songs of all time as well. So yeah. So yeah, I, I do cherry pick some Madonna songs. The last one I will give out is, or the last one I want to talk about is she and him, which of course is Zoe Deschanel and M Ward. They have an album called melt away, which is a tribute to Brian Wilson. So it's basically, she and him singing Beach Boys songs. And if you're familiar with the way she and him sounds, very smooth, dreamy, a um, lot of layers, high level production. This is a perfect fit. And they've released a couple singles from it already. Uh, Darlin and Wouldn't It Be Nice. And they, they sound great. Um, uh, M. Ward has leads on Darlin and uh, Zoe Deschanel has the lead vocals on Wouldn't Be Nice. And that is out on uh, July 22nd. And the Panic at the Disco album is out on uh, August 19th. I don't know if you mentioned that or not. All right, so that is it for us and the summer music preview. That summer's already here, so it's not really a preview. It's summer music now. Right now. Summer music now. All right, guys. Until next time, listen to us on Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever you listen to podcasts. Watch us on YouTube and Facebook, Twitch, and clips on Instagram, of course. And we will see you next time.